In your world, things are important. But what about the things that aren't important anymore? Well, sometimes those things end up here, in the magical land of Dilstonia, where little creatures called the Jiflings live on their little Jifling ship. They find these things that we throw away and fish them out of their sea so they can recycle them and put them to good use once again. And here they are now, ready to work. Eccentric young pumpkin. Ooh, I'm ever so excited. The hedge, who was a very lazy jiffling. Like, hey man, is it time for bed yet? Miss Katie, who loves fixing things and dressy up. Sometimes I like both together. Albert, the ship's gardener. Hop -a bay who's been into me cabbage patch like? And Friedeline, a very sensible jiffling who looks after everybody on the ship. Yeah, that is correct. Oh. Today on the ship, it's a super bright and sunny day. And so all the jifflings are outside, each enjoying their favourite activities. Yay! Oh. Hey! Yeah! Miss Katie is on the little roof of the ship, fixing and mending the solar panels that help to drive the Jifflings' sunny engine. Our engine is called a sunny engine because it gets its power from the sunshine. Just like Hedge gets power from sandwiches. Like, hey, man, did someone say sandwiches? Oh, no. Now you've done it, Miss Katie. Here comes the hedge scampering up your ladder, looking for a snack. <laughs> Sorry, hedge. There's no sandwiches up here. But since you are here, could you pass me my tool belt? Oh. Well, hedge was a little disappointed, but he picked up Miss Katie's tool belt and went to pass it over. Except, because he was only thinking about his tummy and not about anything else, he threw the belt much too hard and it clattered across the roof. Careful, Hedge! That's my favourite tool belt and you nearly floppity flinged it right into the sea. Like, sorry, Miss Katie Man. Called Hedge, climbing down the ladder. I think I can like smell sandwiches coming from over there. So Hedge headed off across the deck towards young Pumpkin, who was standing next to his favourite tricycle bike, pumping up the tyre. Woo! Hello, Hedge. My bicycle tyre is flat as a pancake. I need to humpity pump it right up so I don't fall off. Like, did you say pancake? Then Hedge bounded forward in search of pancakes, running right over the top of the little bicycle tyre. Hedge! You've just whooshed all the air right out of my tyre. You have to be more careful. Like, sorry, little pumpkin man. Cried a hungry, bungry hedge as he jiffled quickly off towards Albert's delicious garden. Hoopity, 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 hey! Well, hello there, hedge. Today, Friedeline and I are watering my plants. Have you come to help? Like, totally no. I'm just here to gobble things up. Oh, greedy hedge. If you want the delicious garden treats, you must help us to water them first. Aye. So Albert, hey. Friedeline oh. and a hungry, bungry, wungry hedge what? went to get their little gardener's watering cans. But since Hedge was still only thinking about his tummy and not concentrating on what he was doing, he picked up his watering can and bished it right off the side of Albert's garden bench. Oh, Hedgeman, be careful. I need that watering can for watering my plants. Like, sorry, Albert Man. Hedge, you must look after things. Otherwise, they will get broken. Goodness, Jiffs, you know what that sound means. An object which was lost or thrown away on Earth has ended up in your net. So now you all need to jiffle over and heave it in to see what you've found. 
The object landed on deck with a plippity plompsicle. It was bright yellow and bendy with a hole right through the middle. Ooh, I think that's a sleepy snake who dreams about slithering around the jungle. But then Miss Katie stepped forwards, for she knew just what today's object was. She disco jiffled up onto the story seat, and then she began her tale. This is the fireman's hose, and my old dance instructor, Karen Shuffle, told me all about it. Once upon a time, in a very busy city, there were a group of brave firefighters who kept everybody safe. They would drive around sounding their siren, going from one job to the next, safely putting out little fires and making sure everyone was OK. Like Dwayne Bunn, the baker. Thank you for putting out my bakery blaze, firefighters. You've really saved my bread. Well, toast, ha! Huh. And they also saved Mrs Pillow's cat, Silly Puss, when she got stuck in a tree. Oh, thank you, firefighters. Silly Puss is so very grateful. Meow. Meow. Now, there were lots of firefighters who worked in the city and they were all very happy to do their jobs. Yay. But one firefighter was the happiest of all and his name was Ralph. Nino, Nino, here comes Ralph. It's my job to put fires out. So you know when flames attack, just call up Ralph and stand well back. Nino, Nino. Whenever there was a fire, Ralph would jump excitedly into his fire truck, keen to help save the day. Yeah. But because Ralph was so excited and always thinking about the big, important parts of his job, sometimes he would forget about the little things, like looking after his special firefighter's equipment properly, and instead he would just chuck it about. <laughs> then he'd get in trouble with his boss, Hefty Paul. Oh, come on, Ralphie. You don't just throw your hose in the back of the truck like a sack of odd socks. You have to wind it up properly so it's ready for next time. But Ralph was too busy thinking about fighting fires and being a hero hey. to worry about winding up silly old hoses. Woohoo! Look out fires Ralph's about. So now I'm going to put you out responsibly. So every day, Ralph and his fire friends rushed around the city, safely putting out fires. And then, after each job was done, without thinking, Ralphie would just toss his hose in the back of the fire truck in a big, crumpled heap, not even caring when it got banged and crashed about. Well, one day, the team were called out to a really big fire and they rushed there double quick. But when Ralphie went to grab his poor crumpled hose, he found it was covered in holes. So when he tried to use it, water sprayed right out of the side, getting all the firefighters very soggy and not putting out the fire at all. Oh no! My hose is very sad and crying all over. Why? Oh, Ralphie, you've not been looking after your hose properly. That's why it's broken. Now you'll have to sit in the truck and watch while the rest of us save the day. You silly sausage! Well, now Ralph did feel silly, so he threw away his old broken hose and as he sat there watching his fire friends do the job without him, Ralphie realised that maybe it would have been a better idea to take care of his things properly after all. And now the fireman's hose is here. So, what should we use it as? That's a good question, Friedeline. What could you do with a hose full of holes? Well, maybe it could be a musical instrument. 
Well, maybe not. But then Hedge stepped forwards, for he knew just what to do. Why don't we use the broken hose as a sprinkler? With all those holes, the water will come out everywhere and water Albert's garden perfectly. Oh yes, Hedge. The Jiffs all really like that idea. So the Jifflings hooked up the broken hose to their tap and when the water came down, it sprinkled out of the little holes just perfectly, giving all of Albert's plants a lovely little drink. Aye. And so, as the day ended and the sunshine said goodbye, they put everything away very carefully in their sea cupboard, had a lovely rosehip biscuit, and then it was time for bed. Good night, young pumpkin. Good night. Good night, Albert. Bye, well, I'll see you in the morning, like. Good night, Friedeline. What it is, a good night. Yeah. Good night, Miss Katie. Night, night. Good night, Hedge. Hedge? <sighs> oh, I think the head is asleep already. And goodbye to you, wherever you are. Maybe next time you see a thing that you might throw away, you'll stop and see if you can use it again, just like our friends the Jifflings. And maybe the thing you use again will have a story to tell too. Goodbye.